Good morning. Just wanted to share something with everyone this morning on my way to work. Uh, I know a lot of people are still asleep, so I didn't do a Facebook Live. Just be recording it because it's really not planned. So I don't know. Sleeping on Facebook Live just makes me uncomfortable. But um, plus it always goes out. It always goes out, it seems like, for me. But I just wanted to share some things this morning that have been on my mind for a while. I spoke on it last Wednesday at Bible study, but, you know, you know, it's still, it's still on my mind. It's, uh, it will be for a while, I'm sure. Probably forever. Um, you know, there's two, there's two lies that the enemy wants us to believe. And that is, one, that... We've got it all figured out. We've got it all together. You know, I'm talking. I'm talking to believers because, um, and you'll understand why. I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to Christians because um, we got a lot of Christians who think they have it all figured out. Think that we've got it all together, and clearly, you know, we don't. I know firsthand from experience. You know, we don't have it all together. But the enemy wants us to think that we do. And when he gets us to think that we do, we start to feel like, oh, I don't need to do this as much. I don't need to do that as much. I don't need to read my Bible. I don't need to pray. I don't need to uh, go to church this Sunday. And, you know, and we begin to come, become complacent. And we begin to become lazy. And we begin to come too relaxed. And we, because we think that we got it all figured out. And then the other lie is that we just don't got time. We just don't got time. Oh, I just don't got time. Yeah, I used to always think I had no time for anything because I worked so much. And the enemy wants us to believe that we don't have time. We don't have time to read our Bible. We don't have time to pray. We don't have time to go to church. We can't. We can't even. Uh, we don't even have the time to um, tune into church, even though it's become so convenient for us in this pandemic. We can watch it from the comfort of our home on Facebook Live, YouTube Live. We can do Zoom Bible studies. That's too much. We don't even got time for that anymore. Do you think this is coincidence? It's not. There are no coincidences in Christ. There's no coincidences at all. This is not by accident. This was all a plan. This whole pandemic and all, everything was a plan. That's why I like to call it the pandemic sometimes. It was all planned. It's not, there's no coincidences here. And the convenience that we have now through social media and technology, even that is not convenient enough for so many believers. You know? It, it's the truth. You know, we don't have time. We just don't have time. We don't have time to read our Bible. We don't have time to pray. We don't have time to go to church this Sunday. We don't have time to go to church, uh, do it. Do, tune in for a Bible study. And I'm not just talking about mine. I'm talking about every Bible study that I see. Other churches. I watch. I watch, um, you know, here and there. When I see things, I go, oh, this church is, is live right now. Tune in. Three viewers. Four viewers. You know, we just don't got time, apparently. But yet we have time to scroll Facebook and watch a 20-minute video on gold digger pranks. Yet we have time to scroll Facebook and see another 20 minute video on some person who's not even talking. They're just holding up gigantic cue cards and we have to read uh, the whole story and they never get to the point. We have time for that. But we can't read our Bible. We can't even open up the app that we downloaded on our phone and then read the Bible for that. You know, the enemy wants us to believe two lies. That we've got it all together and that we don't have time. We don't have it all together. We need God all day, every day. 24-7, 365. And like I said, I'm talking to believers. Because of course the world don't read the Bible. Why we don't ex we don't expect that because they don't prefer they don't claim to be a believer. They don't, they don't claim to be a Christian, so of course they're not going to read their Bible. I'm talking to believers, Christians, who are so caught up in their day-to-day -day that they have justified why they have no time. 
you know, before the pandemic, everybody was in church, you know. Church attendance was, you know, fine, we'll say, you know, we'll say. In the pandemic, oh, we, church has got to shut down. It's not safe to go to church no more. So that's where all the convenience came in. Facebook Live. And it's all great. It's a great tool. But when that great tool is not convenient enough, then what's the issue? So now, you know, 15 days to flatten the curve turned into 600 days. You know, what are we? I don't know. I don't know. It is ridiculous. And we're still doing Facebook Live. We're still doing all these things. People, Some people come. We got more people coming than we got people tuning in. You know, and I'm talking about all churches. Because, I, like I said, I watch. I watch others too. On our men and women of the Word of God. I see, you know, other Bible studies being posted for approval. And, you know, I'll watch. I'll watch when, when I'm not doing something else, like, you know, studying. And um, for my Bible study or, or study for this, study for that. And I see, oh, this church is live. I'll, I'll, I'll open it up. And I see the viewers. I see the number that is. Three. Four. And it's just, I don't understand it, you know. This, this, this whole pandemic has caused convenience, but yet nothing is convenient. Nothing is ever convenient enough. You know, and I always talk to myself first. Every single day, I have to get up and remind myself, yes, Sam, you have time. You have time. You don't have it all together, Sam. I don't have it all together on my own. I need God all day, every day. All day, every day. And I see how it works. I see how it works in my life because I see how it didn't work when I wasn't like this. When I was not like this, I was just walking around making one mess after another. Making one mess after another, thinking that thinking that I was fine. Well, no, I knew I wasn't fine. I was just lost. I was just lost for a long time. Wandering aimlessly, prodigal son, whatever you want to call it. And now, I see difference. When we make time for God, this is a big topic to me. It's important because I see the benefits in my life. I see how it works. When we make time for God, things work out for us. When we make time for God. And I just I just don't see, I, I see complacency. And this isn't like to, you know, this isn't to like scold anybody. This is to fire you up. You know, if the shoe fits, wear it and get fired up. You know, if you take this wrong, if you take this offensive, that's on you. I'm saying this to encourage. You know, this has been like, I guess you could say boiling in me for a while. I see the complacency. And because I see the benefits in my life. I see how all this works. And I see people who, who need this who need to get this fired up and they're not and then like what's going on do they really think that they're, it's all good they're all good because none of us are I need God all day every day I need him every single second of the day without God I'm going to fall right back into, into the, in the gut I can't you know I can't take a break I can't take time off the enemy is working Overtime. So why are we all on vacation? The enemy is working overtime. So why are we all on vacation? And I'm not talking literal vacations. I, I mean, I'm talking like it's like we're on a vacation. We're not taking things seriously. The enemy is taking things seriously. I posted last night the definition of complacency, and uh, one 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 part of the definition said like unaware of potential danger, something like that. We got a lot of believers walking around unaware of, of the, the, the danger that the enemy is, is is about to unleash on them. 
a lot of believers walking around unaware, unaware of what's really going on. The enemy is working overtime and yet we're on vacation. We're taking it easy. We, we're secure. We're secure. We feel secure. We have that assurance. I don't need to, you know, and I, I always say, you know, you know, one day turns into a week, a week turns into a month, a month turns into six months, six months turns into a year, and next thing you know, you know, we, we can't even remember the last time we read our Bible, and our minds have gone so far off into left field, because we haven't been renewing them daily, we haven't been making daily deposits into our spiritual life. We've been making daily deposits into nonsense. We've been watching gold digger prank videos, and we've been watching, uh, you know, all these stupid videos on YouTube that waste a bunch of time. We've been make, but we haven't been making the daily deposits that matter. And one week turns into six months, turns into a year, and our minds are so far off in the left field, and now we're double-minded, limping around, limping between two different opinions as Elijah spoke about in 1 Kings 17 or 18 where he's he's, a, he's he's challenging the prophets of Baal and he says how long will you limp between two different opinions we got a lot of believers limping around between two different opinions double minded and it's because they don't read their word every single day Every single day. And this is not no... You can take it however you want. This is not no self-righteous video. I need God every single second of the day. This video is made to encourage. Is made to fire you up. And if you, this video doesn't fire you up. If this video offends you. The shoe must have fit. Sorry. The shoe must have fit. And you're not teachable. You're not, you're not, you're not coachable. As they used to tell us when I was going through my... Uh, my building a business day, you, know, you got to be coachable. You got to be coachable. That was about building a business. Well, if this offends, if this offends you, if you take this video and it offends you, the shoe must have fit and you're not coachable. You're not teachable. Last night in the men's Bible study that I was supposed to do, one of the points was being teachable. We got to be teachable. We got to be open for uh, rebuke. You know, King David was open for rebuke. Saul wasn't. King David was open for rebuke. When Nathan came and told him a story about a man who had, you know, stolen from a poor man. I'm paraphrasing. David got all incensed. Who did this? Who did this? He didn't realize the story was about him. How he had taken Uriah the Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, and all that David had done slept with her. She was a married woman. Got her pregnant. Then tried to cover it up. Then when the husband didn't go with the plan, had the husband killed to further cover it up. Then he brought her into his home. Married her. And the chapter ends at 1 Samuel or 2nd uh, 1st or 2nd Samuel. I get confused with the 1st and 2nd. I'm not perfect. And he said it ends with the Lord was not pleased. The Lord was not pleased with what David did. And then the next chapter goes into Nathan coming and telling him this story about himself. And when David gets all furious and who did this? Who did this? David goes, it was you. It was you. And David, you know what David's response was? I have sinned against God. So we got to be open no matter who we are. He was the king. And he was being rebuked by Nathan. And he was open to it. So, you know, if this video is too hard for some people... The shoe must have fit and you're not ready. But this, this post is meant to fire you up. I need to be fired up. I need to be woke up. A lot of us still need to be fired up and woke up. You know, the world's talking about, oh, we're woke. We're woke. No. We need to be woke up. We need to be woke up. The church needs to be woke up. I'm not saying get woke. We've all seen that meme. But everything that... Everything that is woke turns to, you know, I won't say it, I won't get King James on you like, like, like pastor, um, I won't get King James on you, but everything that's woke turns to, well, the church needs to wake up, the church needs to wake up, I need to wake up, I need to wake up every single day, 
I need to wake up every single day, and I don't mean physically. I mean, I need to wake up every single day, and I need to remind myself that I need God, and that without Him, I already know. I already know. I already know. So, you know, whoever takes this, and you know, for what it was meant for, amen. Praise God. You know, read your Bible. Pray. Make time for God. We make time for what matters to us. So what matters to us? What matters to us? Because we make time for the things that matter. We can't be complacent. We, we, could, we know how, how easy it is to fall into laziness and complacency. And then we it's so hard to get out of it. And like I said a few minutes ago, you know, a week turns into a month, turns into six months. The next thing you know, our minds are so far off in the left field. We don't, we don't even believe what we used to believe. I posted something last night about how so many believers nowadays, young people, don't even, don't, it was three things they said they don't believe. They believe that there's multiple ways, multiple ways to God. I'm talking about Buddha and Muhammad, multiple ways other than Jesus. And talking about how, oh, I believe Jesus sinned, or I'm not sure if Jesus sinned. That's what happens when we become complacent. That's what happens when we become complacent. When the church becomes complacent, when pastors become complacent, the people start to become double-minded and, and they start to limp between two opinions and they no longer believe what we believe. And that's why we don't hear talk like this much anymore. Many churches don't talk like this because it's all about tolerance. It's all about acceptance. It's all about, oh, well, you know, that scripture don't apply no more. That scripture don't apply no more. And I, I've used the analogy before where we're going through the Bible and we're supposed to be highlighting. We're supposed to be highlighting, but people got a highlighter in one hand and a and white out in the other. And they're highlighting the, the blessings of God. Oh, God's going to bless me. And they're whiting out, uh, you know, oh, I don't like when God, when I talks about after those 70 years. Everyone talks about Jeremiah 29, 11. They don't want to talk about, you know, the verses before 11. Read it. So, you know, as you can see, I'm feeling a certain way this morning, as they, as they say. Uh, I heard Bism, Christian rapper, say that once. I'm feeling a certain way. Yeah. And uh, I'm feeling a certain way this morning. And I just wanted to share that. And like I said, if it offends you, the shoe must have fit. I'm, I mean this for... I mean this for encouragement. I mean this to fire up. And I, I you all know my father. It, it wouldn't make sense for me to pull punches. I wouldn't be his son if if I walked on eggshells. I, I, I'm not going to walk on eggshells. So, you know, I love you all. God bless you. This was meant to encourage and fire up. And those who take it the right way, you know, amen, praise God, um, you know, I'm here at work, uh, I was going to come in at 5 this morning, but um, I had second thoughts when my alarm went off, so I came in at 6, that's my, that's my schedule anyways, but, um, but, um, yeah, so I was like, no, not, not today, not today, tomorrow, I'll come in at 5, the rest of the week I'll most likely come in at 5, but today I mean, I could, no, I'm coming in at 6 so I'm here at work uh, I'm going to go you know, do my 8 hours do my 8 and skate as they say and uh, and continue and just you know have, have a blessed day God bless you all um, God bless